Hey everyone, this is Kaz, and you are watching Two Broke Watch Snobs. You have made it to episode, I gotta count, <laughs> I can't, when I, when I run out of fingers, we're out of episodes. We have made it all the way to episode number four of the TBWS Writer's Room. What is up? Um, this is going to be a really, really fun topic. The TBWS Writer's Room is our YouTube series where the TBWS writing staff, and in this case, a special guest who we'll talk about in a moment, get together and basically shoot the shit, dig into, usually have drinks, although I think for one of us, probably a little too early to drink, or it's not too early to drink. It depends what stage <laughs> of the quarantine uh, you're in. Because if you're in stage five of quarantine, it's who yeah. knows what o'clock. It's 8, it's 8 p.m. So... Episode four, we thought it would be a lot of fun. The time of this recording, it is April 24th. It's approximately, I think, like 10 or so days after Breitling uh, capitalized on the changing platform with trade shows and COVID-19 and closing everything. Breitling made a whole bunch of really cool new announcements uh, for some models and three lines specifically uh, just in their own format. You know, they didn't have to rely on the Watches and Wonder or Basel or Smoke Signals or any other, any other kind of like archaic garbage bullshit. It doesn't really matter. They did their own thing. Uh, with the webcast and so what we will be talking about is those releases sharing our thoughts sharing our insights kind of talking about uh interesting things and just really digging into it uh while also getting perpetually a little bit buzz or at least that's usually how i run these things when i'm here which is fine because <laughs> it's our show so let's do this first i want to introduce all of you fine folks at home listening watching whatever it is to everyone that is here uh i'm going to start with our very special guest we'll do introductions we'll also do a wrist check we have to honor tradition we have very few for, for traditions on this fucking show or not on any of these shows and the wrist check is definitely uh, uh one of them so here i will start with i'm gonna start with our special guest so that is dale dale is the only one who is clearly recording in daylight right now because he <laughs> is on the other side of the world uh, yeah you're in Australia, Dale. You may otherwise know him as uh, so. You've you've heard me say this. We butchered this, you know, plenty of times on air. Uh, so there's two ways to say it on Instagram. It's Mr. Ace K Productions or Matchcheck Productions. Either way, if you see the if you see the stuff on Instagram, you know it. Really incredible photos. Really really detailed. It's one of those things where when I take a photo and post it, I'm like, yeah, I did good. And then I see one of Dale's photos, I'm like, fuck, everything I've done is meaningless. And I should just <laughs> do true. something else. <laughs> Because <laughs> the photos are, are quite top-notch. And um, I want to plug this also. Dale is doing a, a YouTube channel. So Mr. Ace K Productions, there'll be a link in the YouTube video uh, here. So go and check it out. So the same quality uh, of production that you get on Instagram, you see it in video form. It's really fucking cool. It's really a lot of fun. I'm going to stop talking. Dale, I'll let you go. Say hi to everyone, and let's do a wrist check, man. What do you what do you learn for the TBWS epi Writers Room episode number four? First of all, thank you. Very kind words, Kaz. Much appreciated. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm Dale, Mr. SK Productions, usually is what we, I go by. Uh, and today I'm wearing my, rightly so, my uh, 2005 or three. I can never remember, Breitling Navy Timer in blue, blue dial. Cool. They, um, with a custom-made strap by a local guy here in Melbourne. So. Is it one of those blues that's like super blue, or do you have to get it at the right angle to know it's blue? You have to get it like the right angle. It's like That's sometimes awesome. it's blue, sometimes it's like almost aqua, like bluey green. So um, my first review I did on my YouTube channel was uh, the Navi Timer. So <laughs> cool. One. Very, very cool. Awesome. Uh, let's go down the line here. Next up is Henry. Henry, what is up, man? Say hello to everyone and tell us what you're wearing. Hey, guys. Hey, anyone. So I've already de-risked it because I have to hold this guy up. So <laughs> this is uh, keeping in, in uh, the spirit of our two broke uh, section that we now have on the site. So this is a this is a Lejeure uh, Valjoux 7733 chronograph, and this shares uh, eerily DNA with a watch called the Breitling 9121. If you can, if you Google it, uh, which I think had a Venus 188 movement, and it's this cool dual register chrono. Lejeure was a brand that was an American distributor for Yema, and I think a lot of these brands back in the day shared parts with Hoyer, Breitling, a lot of the big houses. So there's a Breitling that looks exactly like the same deco numeral, same dual yeah. register, telemeter scale. Uh, so that's my my lofty Breitling pseudo connection. You nice. did a write-up on the site. I did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll throw that in the link in the description as well. Really, really cool. He's 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 gone full, like, CSI enhanced. He's got side-by-side -side photos, really cool <laughs> write-ups. It's actually a lot of fun. I'll get a link in the description for that. Super cool, cool man. Good good choice. I totally forgot you, you had that watch. So smart. My watch has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it's a watch I like, and it's, it's one I was telling you about earlier. So, uh, Going down the line here, Damon, say hello to the nice folk at home, man. What are you wearing? Hey guys, I'm Damon here. Um, I'm wearing a Breitling Mont Berlant. It felt topical. Yeah, it looks like it's a reverse panda there. 
Um, the reference is A41370. It's a 2894-2A. Uh, um, it was actually my first nice watch. So wow, cool. sort of serendipitous that we're talking about Breitling. How'd you get it? Did you so first first nice watch? As many folks kind of dig into, it's almost like a. I hate fetishizing it, but it's like almost like a rite of passage, like my like my nice watch. Did you walk into like a brick and mortar? Did you is it like did, did you apply? Was it like applying for a loan? Did you get dressed up? <laughs> and did you like walk into so you didn't look derelict? Like I'd like to look at the watch, please. Like, yeah, what was the process? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I say it's my first nice watch, and it's, that doesn't mean that it wasn't like my first expensive watch. I think my first five oh. watches were. St- Stupid. Um, <laughs> it's, this is the first one I don't regret. This is my first. Got it. Regret. Um, we'll but this one, uh, it's it's a little bit smaller. It's a uh, 38 millimeters, um, which I guess That's is so tiny cool. in in you know the Montbrelant world or Navitimer world. Um, but uh, no, I got it like total pure retail therapy. Man, so I, cool. I was uh, <laughs> I was living in Central America at the time, and I was going, going through some rough stuff. And, uh, and I just like, dude, I just want to, I want to get this watch. And the funny thing is that I had it shipped back to my place back in the States. So I didn't see it for like another six months. Oh, oh that's funny. <laughs> I just want to spend money. I don't want to see what I spend money on, but I know I guess got to spend money to feel good yeah. about good. Yeah. Right? That's so cool. Well, I didn't want uh, to sell for it, so, you know. Oh, there you go. That's funny. And here we go. Closing it out for the wrist check. My man, Baird. What is up? Say hi to everyone. Tell us what you're wearing. Are you also wearing some kind of Breitling watch? No. I no. How do I follow a story like that? <laughs> Good Lord. I bought this watch in Bristol, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I just got this in today, actually. This is the uh, the Mito yeah, Commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bright. I, I don't oh, think I you can see that. Oh, that's a cool it's one. The Mito Commander, the, the original Si- the Commander One. It's the 1959 version in gold with the gold um, dial as well. Wow. Uh, this one still has the uh, just like the originals. It might be a little bit bigger. It's 37 millimeters, um, but just like the original comes in the uh, the monocoque case, uh, just like the original <laughs> 59. So that's um, yeah. I heard you guys laugh about that on the podcast this week. <laughs> yeah. Monocoque case. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, it has the original monocoque yeah. case. Um, but it's, uh, the really it, weird it's thing a, is that oh sorry no go ahead I was gonna say the 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 really weird thing is that when Michael and I do the podcast you know there's these odd moments of clarity where like yeah we have you know wives and mortgages and people and things depend on us for their survival but every now and then something occurs which reminds me I never actually fucking grew up right so yeah, man monocoque <laughs> is one of them uh, episode one sixty nine that was a great chuckle I remember during that wrist check Michael and I I think I'm like oh episode one sixty nine and then we paused just enough for it to be funny so uh, yeah here's to not growing up but um so Baird would you this is actually funny I've never asked someone this but it's super cool because I love when you write about the brand would you consider yourself a Mito person because you've written about a few of them before um well the funny thing is is I. You know, I actually didn't know anything about Mito until you guys did something about it. And I think you know like, nothing about. I think yeah, Vietnam. right. And and I I knew the Titanium Ocean Star was out there, and I bought a, you know the one Mike Razak did the, uh, oh, yeah. the review on. I have the rose gold version of that watch. Oh. <laughs> and then I picked up a, then I happened to pick up a 1989 ish. Uh, 8299 Commander and loved it and picked up a multi-fort used and loved it and I kept looking at this one this is the one I wanted yeah um, that original because this is this is like this is like a brand new vintage watch it even has a Hesselite crystal oh that's, that's so cool, cool. which I think is cool. cool you know yeah, yeah totally I think it's cool it might get beat up but I like that yeah. um, but this is you know this is like the uh they still make this thing pretty much like it always was it's just wow. it's new but you know uh but i i i think they kind of i think it's kind of a neat brand you know it uh it, it you know i know it has swatch siblings but it they and you know some of their watches are very swatchy but they still have some gems in there that i think kind of set them apart from the uh the other guys in that same kind of absolutely you know, they're sort of dressy sport, and I kind of think that's kind of neat. Weren't they, like, uh, weren't they, like, really big in Mexico, like, in the 70s and 80s? Like, Mito was, like, a really huge, big market. Huge in South America. Yeah, yeah, huge in South America. In fact, when I post them on Instagram, all the likes are from South America. You oh, know, that's it awesome. Seems 
like you can like you can see all the Spanish names like 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 you know. <laughs> it's like and I'll know I don't understand this. My my mom was explaining to me uh, when I was talking to her recently. Apparently, like in the seventies, eighties, I guess now in the India subcontinent, Rado is super popular. I don't mm. know why. Mm. Uh, I was born here in the states, so I I. I, I no understanding of any kind of cultural expectations over there or anything like that, but that was what explained to me. So I guess mm. I guess it's just interesting to where these these brands kind of get popular. Yeah, super cool, super cool wrist check. And obviously, I made I I, I broke my own rule before we started recording. I said I'm not going to get distracted in the wrist check, and here I am talking about fucking meat over God knows how long. It's all on here. <laughs> this is what Michael deals with. It's funny. So people are like, "Oh, you guys are so great. Kaz is so funny." Is like, it's like, no, it's not. Kaz is funny for like an hour when you hear him once every week. Michael and my my poor wife who's on the other side of this wall have to hear me all the time, <laughs> and that sounds pretty fucking horrible. You know what I mean? Imagine if you had to hang out with John Leguizamo from The Pest <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Does anyone remember that movie? Yeah, <laughs> it could be worse. It's a great movie. It could be worse. <laughs> uh... So let's do this. I'm really excited to talk about this kind of actually because um, I, admittedly, I am not necessarily a giant Breitling. I don't say I'm not a Breitling fan because some of the recent things that have been done, I really, really enjoy. I think if you listen to some of the early episodes of the TBWS podcasts, like some of the single and double digit episodes, you know, we were possibly critical of Breitling's. Particularly the ones that are just like large for the sake of being too large or some size or stylistic choices were made for a reason that we didn't necessarily agree with. I think that phase of our perspective has definitely gone and shifted away, which is normal. People are totally free to change their minds and opinions, especially after two or three, however many years of life we've been you know, doing this thing. So I will say now, though, I do enjoy some of the items that have come out. However, I do not consider myself a Breitling expert. Um, obviously, some of us here are wearing Breitlings, so I, I think this is a really good uh, mix and a group of people to just talk about this. So just let everyone home know what we're going to do. There's basically three phases of this conversation that we're going to frame in each one of the product lines that Breitling had uh, released uh, uh, items for. So I'm just going to tell everyone the product lines at the beginning of the episode, at the beginning of this talk right now. And when I fuck them up, you guys can correct me because um, I'm, I'm not going to remember it because I can't remember my handwriting. Cr- uh, Chronomat? Chronomat? Yeah. That? Okay. Mm-hmm. The first Correct. one is the, the which I which I believe it's it's not a new line. It's something they did back in 1984, which they've started redoing now. So I guess in a way, it's them sort of reaching to the past, but not like the 50s or 60s or like when people think like oh, reaching into our heritage. They don't mm-hmm. think the 80s. They think like you know, you know further 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 back, the way we were. I mean, uh, apparently so. that that uh, line started in the 1940s, the Chronomat line, not oh, the one that's homaging with this, but the, the, they're Copying the 84, but it, I mean, it's been around since the 40s, apparently. They kind of look like the one I'm wearing, these kind of dual register value <laughs> Venus chronographs back in the day. Interesting. I okay. didn't know it was that old. I was looking it up. I said, wow, like 41 or something. That's pretty cool. Okay. But yeah, it's a, it's a, so I guess the last time they did something with the Chronomat line was 84. Well, but it's yeah, existed is... for a while. Uh, so we're going to talk about Chronomat first. Then we're going to talk about what the internet is all alight with uh, these Heritage 57s, these Super Ocean Heritage 57s. And then um, I definitely want to spend some time talking about these uh, new uh, undersized or smaller size Navitimers, uh, 35 millimeters. There's six or seven varieties they released across you know different sort of uh, design uh, uh, spectrums and everything like that. So it's going to be a really fun conversation. Let's do this. I'm going to turn on my screen share, guys, and I'm going to pull up this Chrono. Why can't I say why can't I say this word? Chronomats. Chronomats. Just One syllable at a time. <laughs> One syllable. Just when you think your learning disability has been overcome, the word, yeah, word comes along and just, just sticks its foot out in front of you. Let me turn on my screen share so we can all see the chronomat. That's not the chronomat. That's the chronomat. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Is that yes. Pornhub? Is that porn? I closed all my tabs. I cleared my auto, my auto correct history, and this, so there is no, this is unfuck upable as far as I'm concerned. But you know, well played, Kaz. Well played. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. Stranger things have happened. So this is actually pretty interesting. So there is what? Uh, so anything you guys see here on my screen that says pre-order is part of the new. Actually, I guess all of them here. So there's what? They're there's all two, in. four, 
10. There's 10 models here. It's a mixture of, some of these are two-tone, some of these are uh, kind of panda-esque, and then some of these are just, uh, you know, I guess, single single color. Although I just, oh, that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the second hand there. So uh, let me click on, I'm gonna click on this one just because it's the first one there. Oh, it says green. Is it green? It's, awesome. yeah, it's green so cool. cool. So nice. Dude, I dig it. I thought it was black from the little the little the little thumbnail. Eight thousand dollars does seem like an amount of money. Um, it is. Eight thousand, especially, especially when you're in Australia. <laughs> how does yeah? How does that, how does that work in terms of pricing? It's, uh, it's about eleven thousand eight hundred Aussie, I think. That's a lot of Hershey's kisses. That's a man. lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy town. You could buy a sweet old Holden for that kind of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, actually, they're going up in value too. Oh, I bet. I guarantee it with the with them closing. Yeah. Man, but I like this thing. I think it's interesting. I think the crown situation here is a bit odd. The crown guard has this kind of, and I can't think of a less crass way to say it, clitoral hood thing going on. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and this crown is, its it looks like, a, you guys ever see those things you juice lemons on? Like you squeeze them <laughs> and pass them down? I don't know if that's a Breitling thing. Yeah, well, the, they, it, they had that crown yeah. on the original. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Cool, but yeah. And but I it does just... look like a toothpaste cap like the uh, it just uh, looks like a It looks like an emasculated onion crown. It looks like they took an onion crown and just squeezed the shit out of it and made it that's narrow. That's so funny. Oh, man. Can we can we get um what was that Stallone Richard Meal watch? It was a Stallone oh, had like a water purification tablet. Can we have a toothpaste complication built into the next iteration, where you unscrew that cap and you can in case you just got to keep your pearly whites white when you're in the jungle? I have no idea. Well, they have the emergency watch that you can like get uh, rescued if you're lost in the woods, and then they have the one with the emergency for brushing your teeth if you forget your toothbrush. <laughs> Cost just the same amount of money to use that service, but this is a quality. This is a quality content i have no idea so i just if you guys can see my screen i just scroll to the side here okay the side of this thing is actually pretty interesting what's happening here um there seems to be this sort of section of the watch that's sticking out apart from the case and it's then you have this faceted multi okay i have multi so faceted and then you got the little kind of indents here for the chrono pushers how big is this thing interestingly mil, enough that's what i was getting ready to ask you Let's see. 42 mil. 42? That's not bad. That's not With, uh, bad. Uh, and the case is 15 mil. 15 isn't that bad either. And which is, this is um, uh, the, what, the Breitling uh, B01. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, 15 millimeters really isn't that bad on thickness for an automatic chronograph. It That's really isn't. not that bad. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's thick. There's no doubt. But, you know, it's, that's the, you know, it's about the way it is. Right. So this is part of the. I think we were talking about this in the pre-talk. Also, each of these sort of has like a land, air, and sea thing sort of going on. Each one of these three kind of releases, I think, or at least I mean, I guess they're supposed to. What is this? Is this land? It's a sport watch. Sport watch. Sport watch. Yeah. Sports yeah. chronograph. Yeah, yeah they're, sports chronograph. They're they're definitely borrowing heavily from like its aviation concepts. That rider tab bezel is what it's sort of been known for, right? I think it's uh, it's taken directly from the 84. And so those little corners that we see um, every 90 degrees are meant to be like catching gloves, I think, for pilots. So they're borrowing from that and oh. just sticking that in here. I think it's a little bit more palatable of a version, I think. I mean, I don't know. You guys Apparently, can't... too, those uh, tabs, you can swap them around. So you can have them as a count up or count down timer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Which is pretty cool. Gives you the option, yeah. Because they've got the screws cool. there to adjust them. Yeah. So you can flip them over. That is actually pretty badass. So let me just go through some stats here. Some of these we already talked about, but I just want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence, which is it's a very low bar. Uh, caliber movement, Breitling 1 to manufacture. I have no idea what the Breitling 1 movement is. Again, it's before in-house. you send me... It's in-house. In-house. And oh, I, I, actually, I actually looked up today to make sure it wasn't based on anything, and it... <laughs> It doesn't seem to be. It's uh, it it's is not, their in-house, in-house movement, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It um, is in-house. Yeah. 
You know, cool, I, cool, I know cool. I know a lot of people like to throw in house around when they just change a couple of things, but this right. one's actually made by them. It, it's hmm. not based on something else. A lot of swatch, uh, a lot of swatch brands do that because they'll modify or they'll brand some kind of Etta. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think every one that has an eighty-hour power reserve in the swatch group is just is just using that Etta C zero seven seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. The the Powermatic eighty or the Mito eighty, whatever they. Have. I think Tiso yeah. calls it the Powermatic eighty. So right. this thing movement brightly won. Self winding, seventy hour power reserve, one point second chrono, thirty minute, twelve hour totalizer, cool, twenty eight thousand vibrations, forty seven jewels, dial aperture, calendar. Oh, the date window. Okay, cool. Oh, that's a weird spot. I don't think I've ever mm. seen the date window in the I didn't, even, yeah, I didn't even notice that. I've seen some I've seen some chronographs like this with the date window in that bottom register. I actually kind of like that if you're going to put a date window on it. There's it's something cool. I if I cannot stand anything, it's that stupid date window at four thirty. Yeah, <laughs> it drives me crazy. So I, yeah, I don't uh, mind. That it looks pretty. You mean good. like this one? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there I have go. swatches like that too, but it is it grates on me. I'm like, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen. I, I I I'm usually indifferent to where the date window is. I'm actually always indifferent to a date window in general. If it has a date window, cool. If it doesn't, you know, I, mean, I I don't care. I think this is probably one of the more elegant executions of a date window that I've seen. Yeah. That said. The most times you see folks complaining about date windows, it's going to be obviously in big brands like this, um, but then also a lot of micro brands get flack for their date window usage. But at the same time, larger brands like like Breitling, who have a history and manufacturing capabilities, they have the option of being a little more creative with the date windows. A lot of other brands, I guess, might not necessarily have manufacturing capabilities or resources or that kind of contact with the folks who are making the watches. So seeing it there is actually pretty dang cool. And the I'm, date window's black, so it you know it's yeah, not yeah. like it's exploding on you. You know, let me go, let me let me look at some other colors just for another. I'm I'm also just like enamored with that green. I didn't I didn't realize it was green. Let me look at one look of these. Look at that sweet rose gold dial right there. This here, uh, yeah, that cool. one. Chrono that's, that's and cool. and this is just this is just me talking from an aesthetic point of view because this watch can, is is which I think is actually cool that they wow. went to the '80s, um, but yeah. that sucker right there. Is, this is it the 1980s to me? Like this, funny enough, the chrono, this particular style of chronomat is the one I'm more um, no, uh, not knowledgeable, but it's the one I've seen. Yeah. Um, so th- it's kind of cool to me that they went to the 80s model because nobody goes to the 80s for Jack when it comes to watches, but <laughs> that right? one right there, that <laughs> one right there is cool as crap. It says copper. I thought it was rose gold, but copper, it's still cool. Um, I like that. Copper makes it sound more tool watchy. Rose gold's a dress watch, man. But this is- I know, I know. But that, <laughs> that one's this is that one right cool, there. Yeah. Are those two tone ones rose gold? I don't I think so. Know. I think they might have some gold. I was looking at this today, actually. Mm. They, red, uh, hey, red gold, red, yeah. 18 karat red oh, gold. Holy oh, wow, red gold. Beautiful. Oh, 12. Look at that. $12,000. Beautiful, mm-hmm. It's beautiful, though. It is. Oh, they got the crown in rose gold, too. Just. Uh, Just so you is, know, that may seem more uh, yacht time than air time, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends. It depends if you're flying the plane or if you're being flown right. in the plane. Right. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I think Are you in the be, front or the back? Have, you're in the back in your own jet, I'd say. <laughs> you know, your white sport coat and your pink shirt. Yeah, too good, man. This is this is actually. I I'm. So there's uh, – Michael and I are kind of weird about two-tone watches. I know there's some that he likes. Obviously, I always that, I always talk about that stupid two-tone. The, the bluesy, the the blue dial <laughs> Rolex sub. It's not even – It's one, that, I think that was one of the first Guilty Pleasure watches we ever did. The Guilty Pleasure's watch segment is a, is a, a series of shows that Michael and I have done on the Two Book Watch House podcast where we just choose watches that we feel really bad for liking. And I, that, that Rolex bluesy was one of mine, but traditionally I – I'm not always a fan. Oh, I can make the picture bigger. This is the future. I am not always a fan of uh, two tones, but this is actually interesting because it's also drawing my attention to the do- uh, the bracelet on these things. The bracelet's all awesome. I love it's that thing. Really interesting. Yeah. It's like, like you say that it's, uh, it's the Rolo bracelet. Rolo, yeah, Rolo. yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, check it's out the weird. price jump on that sucker. Twelve thousand. The bracelet reminds me of like I was talking to Mike Razek about. 
expansion bracelets, like cheap, like speed L bracelets that we yeah. were putting yeah. on our watches. And it kind of has that vibe. I'm sure it's really, really nice and well made and everything, but it looks like a, an old vintage. It looks like a uh, cheap Twist It really does. <laughs> yeah, Twist of Flex, right. Yeah. Funny. It has that vibe too, which is, which is you know, kind of, I guess, like 60s to 80s, but it's, it's kind of cool. I like that. Like yeah, the it's similar to the original as well. It's similar yeah. to the 80s version as well. Yeah. That bracelet. Yep. Do you think this is a... Uh... Oh, sorry. There's one there on rubber too, if you go back, the full gold one. Let me see. Ho oh, ho grill. Nope. All right. Let's That's see what we're looking at. I think the most palatable. 20 oh, grand? Yeah. 20 grand. <laughs> Anthracite. Anthracite grand. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, we can all agree it's certainly a watch. Um, <laughs> at least there's a selection of price ranges, right? That's actually, I mean, that's true. You are, I think, in all the releases they've done, this is the one, the Chrono Mat, there are the most options here. Panda, di- Panda dials, solid color dials, two tones, and then if you really wanted to tell people something, you could get this thing on the rubber strap. Uh, the whole thing is red gold, anthracite dial, Breitling's all purpose watch for your every pursuit. All purpose, I could definitely not change a toilet with this watch. I would for not feel comfortable. Pursuit, yeah. Uh, you know. Ever since Rolex released that rose gold yacht master with that black strap, I'm starting yeah. to see it. They made it cool. It. In fact, that's why I bought my Mito rose gold ocean star. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Screw lock, two gaskets, crown, two gaskets. Crown. It's 200 meters water resistant too, which is pretty good for a chrono. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. In uh, are they still are they still chronometer surf? Cr- cr- yeah. Chronometer surfing uh, everything. Yes. All Breitling's uh, chrono. Uh, all the ones are. Wow, I thought they hey, even their Eta, even their Eta movements are. I think. Mm-hmm. Wow, they are. That's got to add to the cost. That's not that, that that's not cheap doing that, sending that out. The only thing is, I I heard George's Kern say the CEO that um, the five year warranty is only on the B zero one movements. Mm. Oh, really? So I don't I don't know what the warranty mm. is on their Eta movement based. Interesting. Companies. So I thought that was interesting. Huh. I think for me, I know we haven't clicked through all of these, but for me, in terms of look, I, I don't know. This the, the the green one. I'm really like if I for some reason if I like I don't know if I killed a man and took his wallet and I had eight thousand bucks, I would probably. Um, that's a horrible thing to say. I take that back. I would probably go for this green one just in terms of the Chrono Mat releases, just because I like. Um, I like green watches, obviously. I, I didn't even do my fucking wrist check, guys. Here, really quick. Everyone knows what I'm, everyone knows. I'm wearing the Christmas Chrono. <laughs> If you can see it, uh, I, so I like green watches. I like teal watches. I, I, I um, my my other orange star diver with the teal dial is here as well. Um, so I, I always gravitate towards green watches, but green is a really tough color because it's really easy to just fuck it up and have it look like a really disgusting like poker table that people just drop beer on and danced on. And just, but in this execution here, it's pretty cool. I think the it looks, green like classy, it looks like a classy poker table. It has like the, the red hash marks give me uh, Alpinist vibes also. I'm sure that's what they were going for, but uh, the green and like just like the small red hash marks are on the outside of the chapter. Oh, that's right. On the outside of the chapter ring, it's red. Yeah, you just get like Alpinist vibes from looking at that. Now, Dale may know more about this than I do because he's more in tune with Breitling, but Breitling is typically kind of popular in the uk is that correct is it popular with the uk i feel like i've heard that i don't know if that's real though well mm. anyway that green that green reminds me of like the a british racing green mm. oh used to see wow. on like mm. jaguars and stuff right. like that that's well bentley like. right yeah they, they yeah. do a bentley watch um, that's cool. Absolutely, or they used to. I don't know if they still do, but uh, but that that green reminds me very much of uh, like a British racing green. That's so cool. So I'm I'm digging this green one, Baird. We all know your thoughts on the copper dial, um, Henry. Any one of these kind of catching your eye, or I, mean, I like you know. See, I, so I like the green. I do like the rich color of the green. But I, yeah. I feel like if I were going to get something that was supposed to be kind of a reissue of a, of a classic one, I'd probably go something like Panda Reverse Panda. And I have to say the the green or the white Panda, I wouldn't mind if the date window were white in that black register to pop out a little bit more. But it had that contrast. I think I, I think I would that. that. I think that would so be cool. You want the window to pop out, otherwise you'll yeah. you'll have the same experience that we all did, and that we didn't even see it. We didn't even yeah. see the day. Well, so, I mean, I might go, I might go for the green. I might go for that silver. That silver is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And Dale, what about you, man? Are you are you on board with the rubber strap and the anthracite? 
Oh, I think he. Uh, I oh no! He may have dropped or left or. Did we lose him? I we think lost we lost him. him. His internet died. Oh, that's okay. Let's see if we can get him back. Oh, that might be why you didn't answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, Listen, guys, if you need Dale to answer your questions, this is the time to ask. Like, my accent can't be that bad that he didn't understand me. <laughs> Dale, keep silent if you think this is this. And just, like, let the style. <laughs> just keep to yourself, man. And just let the silence roll. Okay, yeah, Dale thinks this. This is the perfect time to put words in Dale's mouth. Uh. Do you think Invictus is the best brand? Be completely silent if you think so. <laughs> Don't make fun of Invicta. Come on. You can make like okay, you can make fun of Invicta. That's, That's what got me into this thing. I, I have one. We I made that comment on air. God, I forgot which episode it was. I'm turning into everyone's grandfather. I said a thing 30 years ago and I can't remember what it was, but I said but so I can't remember when I said it, but I said something like we should all thank Invicta and like like mall, quote unquote, mall watches like Fossil and yeah. Guess watches because nine times out of ten, those are the watches that got us into watch collecting. Oh, yeah. Not to get too far off topic, but the one you've got, Kaz, I've got the, the black and gold two tone. That's yeah. what. My father gave that to me. Mine's got the old Miyota movement in it before the Seiko movement. And that's that's what started this whole thing. There you go. I mean, before I even bought, I mean, I had an Invicta. I ended up selling it for a, a Seiko SNK. And before I even had a watch, when I started getting interested in it, before I knew all the rules and all the preferences and the watch community and all this kind of stuff, the first thing I was drawn towards was a Breitling Navitime or Cosmonaut with the Arabic numerals around the dial, that super busy watch. And I was really looking at getting a, uh, what would be the plate word, a reproduction watch of that. There's some some uh, replica watch, some website had all these replica Breitlings, and I was like, oh, it's pretty, you know, and then I found out later on, that's very, <laughs> I looked down upon, very not it's cool. taboo. but I was just like drawn in by that, and I was like, oh, man, Breitling, what is this, you know? That's funny. Oh. Wow. So, yeah, uh, Dale just confirmed his internet has died, has oh. committed, has committed seppuku, it is no longer amongst <laughs> the living, which is oh. fine. These things happen. Special um, guests out, now it's just us, that sucks. <laughs> he, was, he was probably just like, you know what, I don't have time for this shit. I gotta eat breakfast. And then he just kind of just, I mean, but who eats breakfast at 11? Well, I mean, I have, I have breakfast at 11. It's brunch. It's sick. It's brunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's brunch, you goddamn uncouth breakfast heathen. Here, let's do this. The show must go on, guys. So um, we'll get Dale's opinions on the Corona Matt at some other time. Uh, I, I'm going to guess he probably dug one of these two tones or. Let's just say the rubber strap, just to, just just to keep just to keep the flavor. Let's just say he liked the rubber strap. Dale, don't say anything if you like the rubber strap. <laughs> the crowd has spoken. Rubber strap, Silence Dale. is complacence. Silence is complacence. Let's do this. I want to transition and I want to talk about these Heritage Fifty Sevens. Mm. So I'm switching screens here. Can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. Can do. Okay, so let me actually go to the main page so we can just see them all. Uh, so in these Harry's 57s, there is what? They released, the hell, there's this one, limited edition chronograph. That's new. Uh, well, well, at least new to me. So there's that one, but let's focus on these four because these are the ones that I, I think most people are aware of. These three, uh, these three, I, 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 you, know, you can count now. These four. This one, the Rainbow one, which is limited edition, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And then in addition to that, there's, there's this black dial. There's mm -hmm. this sort of, I guess, rose gold gilt dial, which is kind mm -hmm. of interesting. And then there's this blue dial. It's a very common blue you see a lot of these kind of bright thing pieces. Yeah. Um, off the bat, what's everyone's impression? Because what I thought was weird is when I started seeing the press material from Breitling, I think they were trying to do like, oh, 1957, like Year of the Surf. It's a surf watch. And I'm like, ah, I'm not seeing surf watch. But mm -hmm. I, I could also be insane. I'm not like a surf. I'm not an athlete. Mm -hmm. Don't let my neck be your fool. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not an athlete. So <laughs> I, I'm curious to what your guys' thoughts are. First impressions, uh, Super Ocean Heritage 57s. I mean, I, I think this is, I think it's awesome. I, I really dig vintage uh, skin divers, old super compressors, old. I mean, like some of the the Breitling watches I like the best are like the original Super Oceans of this variant. There's another Super Ocean that's got uh, a white dial and a black chapter ring. I don't know the reference number, but it's it's yeah. it's been on Hodiki or something. It's really cool. Uh, this this one, I mean, I. I'm mostly aesthetically driven, at least initially, with watches, and that's you know why I think I like all these vintage skin never watches. I think this one's awesome. The broad arrow hand, this yeah. like 
weird, like mid century looking dinner plate bezel that's like concave and goes. It's concave. It's pretty sweet. I mean, it's pretty awesome. It kind of it reminds me a little bit of like the the Rado Captain Cook vibe. Exactly. Right? Bezel looks yeah. like. It's almost, it's um, almost a rip off from their. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, well, right. I don't know. Like, how old is the Captain Cook? Like, when did that? When was that? Uh, first it's out? old. Like, yeah, this is, I mean, this watch is from like the fifties, I think, originally. I mean, yes, maybe fifty-seven, maybe even earlier. It, it yeah. is. It's from yeah. the late fifties, and the the original. I looked one up. Looks exactly like that one. Might be a little bit smaller. Um, but one cool thing I read was that this watch came out to uh, Omega and Rolex had released their dive watches, and they were only a hundred meters. The original. Was 200. original was two hundred. This wow. one's only a hundred. That's yeah. <laughs> that's the most controversial thing about this whole watch. Uh, really? Oh yeah. I mean, well, the other thing is, is, is that it's forty two. Who's diving with too. this thing, man? It's sorry. No, no, no. I mean, it's just kind of weird. Like, if you're going to commit, I mean, because the original right. watch had like the shark mesh, shark mesh bracelet and everything, and and it's almost like a like a one for one as far as design components. Like, it's almost like. The first Super Ocean Heritage, they were sort of testing the waters of how they could kind of get back to that look. And then once they had built their confidence, okay, now it's getting a lot of warm reception. Let's go back to like the original. And, and that's, that was sort of like the second iteration of that. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're going to commit that much to the design aesthetics, like why wouldn't you, especially if, if you have a 42 millimeter case, why don't yeah. you just sink a little bit more into that waterproofness? Yeah, let's really? you know? let's do this. I definitely want to hone in on the meter, uh, the the meter kind of water resistance here, mm -hmm. because I have my theories. But it looks like Dale is back on Skype, so let me see if I can get him in here, uh, and uh, we can kind of catch him up with where we are at. Add yes, add. Thank you, Skype. Hey, hey, he's back. How's it going, man? Well, to the world's worst internet. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. So can you see my screen right now? Uh, yeah, cool. Super Ocean. So yeah, so uh, we'd wrapped up the Chronomat discussion. We'd all agree as a group that your favorite was the rubber dial all gold one. Is that correct? Or did you have a preference? Which Chronomat you liked the most? Uh, I should like the... Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's go. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I, should, I shouldn't be rude. Uh, I'm, so I'm looking at the Chronomats again, just to, just to catch you up, because I think you cut out when we started doing this. Uh, I preferred the green one. Uh, Henry was going back and forth between either the panda or or reverse panda, if I'm correct. Uh, Henry Baird, you were digging yeah, the the copper copper dial one. Oh yeah. In terms of your preference, Dale, with the chronomats, just so just so we can kind of like uh, get an idea. Or you can say none. You like none of them. That's an option as well. He's. Did I lose again? <laughs> Take a minute. What is happening? Can you hear us? I want to that's say that's really bad. bad. Okay. Okay. Would it, if if it's cool, man. Um, if you need to hop off, because if it's going to be super difficult to hear us, uh, it is. It is all. It yeah. is all good. All right. I'll leave you to it. So, yeah. Okay. Hey, man. We'll get Thanks you back for, for another me. one. Okay. Good talking to you, man. Bye. Take care. Oh well, that is a shame. All right. So you all heard it. He liked the he liked the the rubber the rubber strap one and the gold dial, right? I wish he couldn't hear us, and he's just cussing on the other side, like <laughs> throwing stuff around, thinking he was disconnected. See, I could tell he was really disconnected because he's a watch guy. If he wasn't, he'd be like everybody else in my life. Where I start talking about it, like oh, I can't hear. You. I gotta go. I'm <laughs> fucking boring. <laughs> all right, let's my see. This. I got yeah. friends. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Dale back for another episode over more uh, stable connection. But here, let's do this. Let's go back to the Super Ocean Heritage. So we were just talking about the controversy and where if you're going to do the Heritage 57, if you're going to do the mesh, if you're going to do the 42, if you're going to do everything so true, why would you not just commit and do the 200 meters as opposed to the 100 meters? My my business answer because I always I'm too cynical to think. Decisions exist in a vacuum or decisions are, are random. My business answer is that getting this to 200 meters would have pushed it above the four to 5,000 price range, probably closer to the 8,000 price range chronomat. And I'm guessing Breitling wanted their price sort of brackets to be, you know, 
not close to kind of cover a whole range. So obviously the Chrono Mats are, you know, 8 to 12K and the Harry oh. 67s are 5 to 4 or whatever the hell it is. I'm not sure what the Navi timers are, but that's my that's my cynical answer. Now, granted, I don't know how this particular watch is built, but there are cheaper watches that achieve a sustainable 200 meter water resistance. And I mean, this is kind of what this particular watch, that was its thing in the 50s. Look, we did 200. The big brands over here only did 100. You know, look what we've done. And yet this one, which looks almost just like it, is pretty much, you know, I mean, it's like it went backwards a little bit. The other thing, I can't find a picture of it, but in the crystal, it says glare proof both sides. Exhibition, exhibition case backs are usually hard, I, my understanding, to get to 200 meters. I wonder I don't if know. that means that it's AR coded on both sides yeah, of the crystal. Yeah, I mean, just the face, not necessarily yeah, the, the back. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, those are, so not only am I not a Breitling expert, I don't know. Listen, guys, you just serve my secret. Okay. I don't know a thing about watches. I can't read. I can't read good. So, yeah, I you don't really know like why. I that concave dial, though. I mean, the concave bezel. The bezel? That's yeah. Actually, and that, that, that's cool. actually, I love the skin yeah, diver look about it. Too. Yeah. It, and I actually, I actually wrote in my notes that Henry would love this watch. <laughs> that's right in my alley. Oh, Dale, are you back? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Hey! <laughs> What's up, man? Back in the how, game. How, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was the last thing you heard me say with clarity? <laughs> um, that I like the gold chronomat. Yeah. True or false? Um, sure. Yep. It's good. Sure. <laughs> Okay, cool. <clears throat> That's actually really interesting to get your point here. So we transitioned. We're talking about the Super Ocean Heritage 57s. Um, overall, the sentiments are pretty cool. These are really fun watches. Uh, the point that Damon brought up actually super intelligently is that this thing is, you know, the case is right in terms of what it's supposed to be designed off of. Um, you know, mesh bracelet, everything makes sense. But for some reason, the choice to opt for 100 meters as opposed to 200 meters, which is what the original had, we're trying to just sort of talk about the choice Breitling made around that. I don't know if you, if you're, so, cause I'm learning about this now. I didn't realize that was a controversial thing. Do you have any kind of a take or opinion on the choice for Breitling to do 100 meters for this watch as opposed to 200 meters, which would be true to the you know, original? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little odd, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I mean, 100 meters is still okay to go surfing or whatever. I don't see the big deal. Oh yeah, just to clarify for everyone, everyone home that, that that's not too sure. No one's diving with this watch. Right. No, no. This is just you know, it's just it's a it's it's what I call in my day job a vanity metric. I just want to see the two hundred yeah. on the dial. <laughs> yeah, nobody's racing their Hellcats either. They're mostly eighty year old <laughs> men, but the fact of the matter is, they still want that seven hundred horsepower. Right. Yeah. That's funny. Let me go back here. I want to look at the options. I want to look at this gilt sort of red gold thing. I like that one too. It is pretty cool. 5.2K USD. De USD. USD. So it's leather strap. Can I put it on a bracelet if I want? I can. For... Does the price go up? It has to go up. Yeah, it goes up a little bit. Okay. I think it looks cool in a bracelet. I believe those straps aren't coming until September. Is that so right? Melanie, yeah, the mesh. Damn, so that's probably why they showed it on the, yeah. on the uh, leather you one. You can get them on leather at the moment. I think it's pretty cool. I want to see this thing from the side. I want to see the bezel edge. Come on, girl. There you go. Yeah, dude. That's people cool. are really... People, people either really, really love... Because because Oris does this a lot, where like the, ca the 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 case is steel, but the bezel is like like bronze or or or, or, or whatever. So I think seeing it here is pretty pretty interesting. I like it. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are in terms of the two tone in this fashion. I mean, yeah, I like it. The leather. I think it's cool. I, think. I I like gold. I'm still a gold person, so I kind of like that stuff. You got that all gold medo, man. No one no one's gonna say otherwise. And everybody I mean, hates it. Well, I think it's, it's like, cool. It's like a warmer gold. Though. I mean, like the original, like going back to the crime at the original '80s ones were like all like yellow gold and silver, like that hard like Rolex like yeah. dirty, like uh, oyster thing with just like that really harsh yellow gold. So the, I mean, the rose or the red gold is a way for 
people to warm up to it more. But I mean, you know, I think it's I think it's cool with the. I mean, I might have even gone more further on this one and made the uh, made the crown out of that red gold too on this one. I think that would look cool. I didn't even too. catch that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. How how polished is this thing? Is this it thing looks like it's, it looks like it's all polished. Yeah. Oh, uh, that might get on my nerves. I'm weird about polishing. I don't know oh, why. It's definitely gonna pick up scratches. <laughs> yeah, man. What you know, the, I, I, the, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. oh what, what's the what's the bezel? Is it ceramic? It looks like it's got that kind of shiny matte, like kind of mixture of the two. Let's play my favorite game: Control F Ceramic. Uh, bi-directional ceramic bezel. Yep. Well Interesting. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Let me close this out. So let's do this. I want to... I don't want to spend too much time on the blue one. I want to acknowledge the blue one exists as I try and navigate my windows because it's the future. Uh, <clears throat> blue one's there. Blue one's cool. I want to talk about this limited edition um, kind of rainbow indice one because this is the one that obviously everyone um, is, is focusing on. I have... Two things that I find pretty interesting about this watch, which I'll use to open up the discussions. I think it is actually pretty cool, you know, objectively taking the actual aesthetics aside, when you really dig into it, how well the colors actually transition when you go through the spectrum of them. So like yellow to green, the middle one actually is transitioned between the two of them pretty well. I thought that was pretty cool. The other thing, which I think is kind of interesting, is that I guess they've only designed this watch to be aesthetically pleasing if the user has it at 10 and 2 permanently. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> what's going to happen? What's going to ha- Am I going to have like a kaleidoscope seizure at like 435? Like what Like what happens? So like, they should have had, was... like, had iridescent hands to change colors as it moved around the dial. That would have been cool. We can call it this. We can call it the Super Ocean Heritage Mood Ring. We can we can do this, man. All right. <laughs> so I don't know. What are your what are your guys' thoughts? So what's what you? We can go around the room, and Dale, I can start with. I should probably start actually, you know, moderating this thing. Um, actually, Damon, I want to start with you, Damon. Unless because uh, I haven't heard from you in a while. What? Because I'm actually I'm actually very curious to hear your thoughts on this. So when I, you first saw this watch. What did you think? So I, I kind of have an aggressive uh, perception about this watch. I think it's fucking stupid. I hate yes. this watch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate this watch, and I'll tell you why. Because when we were going through the case backs of the other ones, I saw that they were screw back. So the yeah. original one of these watches, they're all milled from a single piece of metal, and so you everything got like dropped in oh. through the center. And I think that's part of where like it got that waterproofness, right? Yeah. Like that, that solid engineering. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, I looked at this watch and I looked at the description, <laughs> and I don't know if we can read it there, but it says here the Heritage Fifty Seven Capsule Collection pays tribute to the original 1957 Super Ocean and the cool, laid-back, surfing lifestyle of the 1960s. Bro, that's two fucking different concepts. Right? <laughs> you're going to take, take conservative 50s era, like design aesthetics, and you're going to say, oh, yeah, it's a tribute to the 60s? Like, like I mean, yeah. it's totally different. Totally different concepts. And so it's just like, I mean, okay, so, right. I happen to have the Bright Line book. Okay. And and I went through the entire freaking thing to see if they ever made any watches that had a tribute to surfing. Never. Yeah. So how are you going to, like, harken back to this kind of era of, mm. of like, you know, oh, and it's like we release heritage that's all about celebrating this thing that we never did. That was that, awesome. when I when I when I brought up Super Saiyan just that's the I I, I, I kind of called that out and just like I'm like, these don't really scream surfing to me like nothing. In the, I've never walked by a Breitling boutique or a Breitling AD and seen mannequins with surfboards. I've seen mannequins with like the all the the, the fighter jet stuff. Sorry, I'm like a I'm like an Air Force plebe. Like all the fighter jet stuff and like pilots with like the fly girls. Although I, although I think they phased the fly girls out um, in 2017, 2018. I've never seen like a surfer in there. But, so I do understand the aggression, David. Yes. But- but Damon, two hundred and fifty pieces and colors. <laughs> and that's the other thing is that Ford is already did first with the artist series. I don't know if you guys remember they they kind of like did a weird thing for a while, like in the early nineties, eighties, when they were like trying to figure out like their thing. But mm-hmm. they did like artist dials, um, and oh, wow. one of them was a whole like color wheel concept. And so I I just when I see this, I think that. So are you right. recommending that Fortis send Breitling a very harshly worded cease and desist? I, 
<laughs> I mean, poor Fortis. Those guys, they get such a bad rap. But, the, I mean, the bottom line, dude, is you're, I'm not going to pay $5,000 for a watch that is, what, what is this thing? A 2892 movement? Like, so an ADA movement, you know? Is when, it 2892? It, it, it yeah. is based on an ADA. The, the, oh, yeah, the, the Breitling, Breitling 10 is, is based on an ADA, no doubt. I mean, there's, there's any yeah, number of in-house up. watches that you can get that I think that, you know, from, from a concept like perspective are just yeah. a little bit less confusing. It's cost certified, though. My man. For what is right, right, right for what is worth. And I'll, I'll... there's only 250 of them in colors. That's right. I'm sure. How can we keep forgetting that? People, will buy them. people don't buy stuff because they think the, it works cool. They buy it because it looks nice and has buttons to touch. Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you the other thing that uh, the other thing I thought? I thought this was also Breitling's version of you. You remember the the gummy bear Daytona? <laughs> Like, <laughs> let's just put this thing out. We know it doesn't look good, but we know people will buy it. But let's try and do it. Let's try and do it our way. And I thought so. I I could totally be like motherfucking erroneous with with my. So those are the first three things I thought. The colors are blended interestingly. You should never have it not at ten and two. And this looks like their weird version of the of the Harboro uh, gummy bear. You know, uh, uh, could, Daytona. They could put dick shaped hands on it. Two hundred fifty <laughs> people are gonna buy it. <laughs> Yeah, the whole flipping concept is so crazy. <laughs> but um, that's that's funny. Like, I mean, good catch on the movement, Damon. I didn't even realize that's was the, so. So you, you know, what's really funny, Damon. You digging into it, looking up the whole surf thing, digging into the movement. I think the idea with this watch, and I think why the internet's kind of latching onto it, whether they realize it or not, is that this is not a watch that's really meant for someone to dig into the details. You see it, you like it. You know, you buy it. Um, Absolutely. So here, yeah. let me. Uh, Dale, Don't forget they've still got, there. They've got. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget they've got surfers as their ambassador as well. Do they? Is there? Do they have surfers as ambassadors? Are they wearing this watch? Oh, I don't know if they're wearing it. I don't know if they're wearing it. I don't know. I I, I am not up to date on my Breitling uh, ambas ambassadors. <laughs> uh, What's your first impression when you first saw this watch? Did you say? Did you say my god with a different intonation, positive or negative? Uh, negative. Negative, my god. Okay. <laughs> what stuck out to you? What stuck out? Do you, so, so I'm actually I'm actually curious about this. Is what stuck out to you as someone that's more familiar with Breitling models than me? What stuck out to you was objectively the whole color wheel concept, or Breitling? This has nothing to do with who you are. Uh, well, they've. They do make super oceans and things like that. So they have done diving slash surfing watches before. Yes. Um, I don't know. I just think they're trying to widen the market spectrum, I guess, mm. just by offering something different. So This is also really great. A really great. There you go. I forgot how to say ours. This is also a really great way for Breitling to get us to talk about them because here we are dedicating probably a, about an hour of airtime talking about all the Breitling releases. You know what I mean? This might just be one of those things where like, hey, let's just make 250 of them. Um, at least people will be talking about our, you know, Breitling, uh, Breitling releases. It's like that scene in Mad Men. I don't know if you guys remember the scene in Mad Men. They're making fun of the old DDB uh, Think Small Volkswagen ads. Um, yes, they came out and they were just and they were talking right. about it for so long. They're like, "Oh, this is stupid. What are they thinking?" And then, um, you know, main character was just like, "Well, regardless of what they're thinking, we've been talking about them, you know, for ten or fifteen minutes." So it's possible that's what's happening here. Uh, let me just do this. I am keeping an eye on the time. We are getting close to where I think I wanted to kind of start slowing things down. Henry, are you still with us? Oh yeah. Did well, you say, oh, my God, in a good way or a bad way when you saw this? All right. Here's my – I'll try to keep this brief two cents about this. Okay. Okay. So uh, part of it is a design thing. Part of it is a not knowing really anything about business and making a commentary about business in some way. So I, one thing is, you know, a company like Breitling, I feel like they – you know, I guess they have to do things to appeal to new customers. But I feel like the people that buy these watches are going to be kind of – in a world where they they know what Breitling is. They've heard of, I mean, it's one of those brands that I feel like it's like, you know, maybe it's not Rolex, but it's a brand that I feel like people are going to buy these watches. They're going to be esteemed. They're going to be, you know, in vogue, et cetera, et cetera. They're classic, yeah. everything. I, 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 what I, what I don't like about it, it's not that, it's not that it's an, it's such an ugly watch. What, what, what kills me about it is that 
they're, they're walking this line between trying to get new customers by this whole, you know, laid back surfing uh, spin on, on the watch and assuming that the new customers don't really know anything about the heritage of these kinds of divers of this particular watch, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But the other side of that is that the aesthetic of these are just so fucking cool. Like even if people don't know the lineage of these kinds of divers, this kind of aesthetic, this mid-century design, it's like, it, it just looks so awesome anyway. So to then yeah. splash, uh, you know, the spectrum of colors all over it uh, for that extra panache. It just, that, you know, just, I don't know. To me, it kind of seems like it, it's like, a, almost like a lack of confidence in their own design from their back catalog. I mean, it's an awesome watch, a classic watch, and it's like you know this black version. I mean, it's it's a, it's a pretty dope watch. I mean, I would see that yeah. if I didn't know anything about mid-century design, if I didn't know anything about the history of dive watches, I'd be like, man, it's pretty cool. Even just just the bezel would draw me, and the ceramic yeah. bezel concave. So, you know, someone's gonna buy it. It's gonna be like the like the Daytona set, and you know, maybe somebody that can afford to, you know, somebody who's not too broke who has a bunch of these. Oh, this is you know a lark. I'll buy a Rainbow One too. What the fuck? And but I, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I could do without it. I could do with. I think Breitling could do without it. I hear you. I I I do agree. I think of these. The black one obviously is the winner. I do love this blue. I love this. I've seen uh, this blue historically on other Breitlings, and I've always really really liked it. Um, I don't I don't know how long they've been using this blue, but damn it. I fucking love this. So, like, when I saw these Super Ocean Heritage 57s come out, I'm like, thank God that's this, they still have one in that blue, you know? Man. Here, let's... That, uh, that contrasting B on the dial makes that blue, too. That 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 copper-colored B. Yeah. That, that makes it yeah. 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 So that's awesome. so cool. Can I just make a comment about the movement? Always. What's up? Uh, there was a message. I saw it. Uh, who is it? Watch Fred. He's like a Breitling... Like, this account's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the guru of Breitling. Um, he said that he did make a post about why they used the B10 instead of the B20. It was basically purely for um, size because they couldn't fit the in house movement in there. It would have been twice as thick. Mm. So they ended up using the um, B10 because it's thin. So he's got the actual dimensions here with uh, renders and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, he said the B10, so the dimensions bezeled diameter is 42 but the actual case is 38 mil wow lug to lug of 46 mil and the height's 9.9 beautiful so it's actually really cool to mention that's fucking awesome with actually that yeah. that i concave wondered concave if anybody bezel. knew how thick it was yeah it looks thin that's that's awesome mm. yeah i would i would actually love to try this on if i Me ever too. if i i would go into bright and pretend to use their bathroom just to be like oh by the way i could try it like just to just to try just would to you try, try the blue one on or the colored one on if they had the colored one, I would try it on just to post a picture on the TBWS Instagram. That's purely, purely it. Purely for marketing purposes. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. I want to transition and talk about these these new Navitimers. Now, there's one, two, three, four, there's six of them. Um, and these are specifically, so these are smaller. They're automatics. They're 35 millimeters. And according to the press material, uh, uh, Breitling has released these specifically to cater to uh, a women's market based on the idea that they've had demand for the Navitimer style, but more suited for <clears throat> what they kind of interpreted as, you know, a, a, a female watch enthusiast uh, taste and everything like that. What's interesting off the bat is that I think these do kind of run the spectrum of honestly pretty interesting and pretty appropriate for the Navitimer line to kind of just not really making sense. Um, for the Navitimer line. Um, obviously, Dale, you're wearing yours right now. Can you remind me how big yours is? Is it 38 or 40? Uh, mine's a 41.5, but it's an older, genera- older generation. Okay. So I'm going to... Which one? I want to click on one of the ones I don't think is appropriate, just in terms of... the. Uh, I'll, I'll click on this two-tone one with the bling, like you do. <clears throat> okay. Uh, steel, 18 karat red gold, mother of pearl diamonds... Um, and the dial seems to have this sort of uh, pearl essence sort of thing going on. Uh, and in case you're at home and you're wondering, the slide rule bezel does work. So you can operate your slide rule bezel and look fabulous uh, while doing it if you're in some sort of diehard die hard scenario. Um, it's one of those interesting things where I, I we did an episode of, of the podcast about this a while back where there's this sort of weird per- perpetuation within the watch industry that, uh, you know, a, a watch specifically focused for like, you know, a women watch enthusiast, they need to have 
two-tone or bling or something shiny where uh, the reality is, you know, opposite that. We have plenty plenty of people who are into the Watch podcast who are, you know, uh, uh, women watch enthusiasts and, you know, they don't necessarily automatically like this stuff. I mean, there are dudes out there who like bling on their watches and there are, are, are female watch collectors who don't really care for that. They want something that will be evocative or appropriate for whatever the style, you know, of the watch is. Um, you know, uh, I think of these new Navitimers that have come out, I do like this blue one a lot because it does feel appropriate. I think it would have been cool if they offered a 35 or maybe even a 36 or a 38 uh, millimeter case, but just a smaller... Oh, there is. Sorry, there's 38. There already is, yeah. The 35, but just a smaller version, not necessarily gendering it, just saying, hey, here's a 35 millimeter, you know, uh, a bright link. Or if they really wanted to do something for women watch enthusiasts, uh, revitalize an old line, create something new, sort of similar to what um, oh God, Cartier had done with the new sort of a, a, a women's watch collection. They did. They just created something totally, totally new. Uh, that was my kind of initial you know, re reaction here. What are your guys' thoughts? I'm not sure if you had too much time to dig into these because no one's also really talked about these 35 millimeter Navit timers too much. Um, let's click on the blue one here. Um, so, so this is like an actually interesting conversation. So, um, I have a lot of, I collect mostly vintage and I have a lot of, uh, really smaller watches. I mean, I have a, I have, I have a number of watches that are 34 millimeters. I even have a, I have a mid-sized, uh, Titus Calypsomatic diver that is, I think it's like 32 or 33 millimeters, it's really small. And what I found through that is that, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, a lot of vintage watches were, were very small like that, but I, I think that, you know, you can, you can comfortably rock a smaller watch than you would think. And I was looking at this blue one thinking like, you know, uh, it's kind of like the midsize 36 millimeter um, uh, Seamaster. Uh, you know, I feel like I, you know, like it's, you know, it's marketed, you know, towards women. But I mean, I feel like this could be a comfortable midsize men's watch. My, my wife and I were talking, well, I was trying to talk her into uh, getting close to our <laughs> fifth anniversary, like maybe buying watches. And we were looking at some things that we thought would be like kind of matching. So we were looking at, yeah. just for shit and giggles, we were looking at uh, Cartier tanks and we were looking at uh, Tudor Black Bay uh, 36, 41, 32. Nice. So I was looking at the uh, the 36 and she was too. She's like, oh, I think the 32 is too small. I think I would want to wear the 36, the midsize men's size. And I thought you'd get the 41. I'm like, I think I'd get the 36. <laughs> you know, and there's some Tudor um, uh, mini subs that are very small and cool. And so I feel yeah. like this collection is so interesting because uh, some of these could viably, especially the blue one, viably be worn by a man, no problem. Uh, you know, I would, on, on the I would wear the fuck. I would wear the I, fuck out of this one. Uh, but then they do this, like you said, they do this bullshit of like, well, we have to, I mean, it, you know, it's kind of bullshit. This idea of like, we have to market to women, so we're going to just plaster this with diamonds and mother of pearl and all this kind of stuff. But there's also that caliber of customer uh, that are that are spending this kind of dough that it's almost like a tongue in cheek thing like when a fashion brand will have like like when like Louis Vuitton like does something with like Supreme the skater brand like they have like a sweatshirt you know to, uh, you know two thousand dollar hoodie that somebody wears like it's almost like this tongue in cheek kind of like I'm gonna wear a Breitling I'm gonna smatter it with diamonds I'm gonna you know kind of like the hip hop guys who do like pave diamonds on their APs and all that kind of stuff and I, <laughs> I feel like some of it might be might be marketed towards those kind of people also those kind of customers but it's well, Charlie Stern likes it. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> she is. Yep. Miss Theron likes it. I'll buy it. Yeah, no, I. It's funny because you you bring up a great point, Henry. I have a thirty four millimeter old uh, nineteen sixty two Seamaster thirty that I'll wear every now and then, and I I love it. That thing is awesome. But by traditional standards, that is, you know, that's not a man's watch. That's right. that's that's small. But I think it's one of those weird things where. Um, it's almost a chicken to the egg question. Is that perpetuated today because brands keep kind of buying into that theme, or is it perpetuated today because watch collectors keep emphasizing that to brands? Hey, Breitling, if you make a 35 millimeter watch, just so you know, as a man, I will not wear it because I'm a man. So I, I, I don't really know, you know, what the answer is, but I think I think it's a super super fair fair point. Baird, what are your what are your thoughts on this? Let me go to the all gold one for you. I mean, I think I think there is an all gold one in here. I saw uh, it. Is. 
There is, sir. And there's that one with the copper face. There's too. the copper. Okay, um, here we go. Uh, but, you know, I, th I agree with Henry. You know, I think that that – I have some 34-millimeter watches that are, are vintage, mm -hmm. and I – I like those, and when I first glanced at these from 10 feet away, you know, I thought, ah, man, that's not a bad-looking little watch, mm -hmm. you know, but I wonder, you know, I think watch collecting as a whole is populated mostly by men, and I wonder if that's why every time they have to come up with a women's watch, they, they have to, they think, oh, women like jewels and colors and yeah. crap like that, but, you know, I also think, I also wonder if, uh, you know, I think I've heard some other people talk about this before, but the, you know, there is probably a man that would wear a watch like that. It's a dressier to me. If you didn't say it was a women's watch, it looks like a dressier Navitimer. Yeah. Just like you said, yeah. you would wear the blue one. But the second they put women on it, most, a lot of people are going to be like, no, no, I can't wear that. Yeah. I can't wear that. I won't do it. Um, in fact, there was a Steinhardt 39 that, um, that comes with a green bezel. It's a Submariner looking one with a green bezel and a green mother of pearl dial. And I looked at that and I thought, man, that's really cool. And it said women's line. Mm -hmm. What's women about it? <laughs> the size. So Actually, I can't I wear it. 39 millimeters. You know, what's. That's what's, funny. <clears throat> it's, it's a perfect <clears throat> size in my opinion. And why can't I wear it? You know, I want to wear it. It yeah. looks cool. You know, so I, I don't get. Wow, god damn. Um, wow. I don't. Know. Are you looking at the yeah. price, guys? Cool. Yeah. That's a lot of donuts, man. No. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> well, no, I think I think Barry, you just gave me another great idea for an episode of the podcast, or we can do another writers room episode. What quote unquote women's watch would you totally wear as a dude? You know what I mean? We don't have to talk about that now, but I think that would be a great topic, you know, for either the podcast or for a writers room episode, just to kind of get by the idea that. Gendering a watch isn't always the most constructive way to approach folks and to build a brand. And sometimes when a brand genders a watch or when you gender a watch, someone is doing someone else uh, a disservice. You know what I mean? Because um, to, yeah, to, 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 your, to your point, so I, um, I, have a, I have an older brother. He and I don't have the similar, like, similar style at all. But And I was, I'm not saying this in like a derogatory way. He would totally wear one of these in terms of style one of these 35 millimeter uh, right. uh nabit timers but the second i told him oh you know this is part of breitling's you know uh uh you know uh, uh, you know women's watch line. line he would totally just shut up he would just shut that idea down oh bro i'm you totally know? not gay bro not me <clears throat> you know but, and i don't know why men are like that you know women are like that they'll buy men's watches all day the term is but, fragile masculinity, and I have been I have been guilty of it plenty of times. Oh, well, we all have. But the <laughs> second you label that as women, it's like, no, bro, no, not me. I wouldn't wear women's jewelry. Uh -uh. Well, the, I mean, the dumbest thing is that whenever they do that, whenever they gender, you know, wristwatches, and I mean, which I think uh, alienates women from wanting to get interested in the hobby because they, you know, it just becomes such a bro thing, mm -hmm. is that it's it's done by size. I mean, like, how fucking stupid is that? Like, oh, it's thirty four millimeters, so that's that's dainty. It's 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 like a, it's like a fucking circle on your wrist. You know, it's like. My wife hates smaller watches because she grew up doing martial arts. She's a second degree bat belt in Hawaiian Kempo. So just naturally, her wrists, and I have five of this, are larger than mine. She can't wear small watches because it looks like someone put like 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 a U.S. penny on dental floss. So the watches that she does, because she, that's, just, that's just what it is. So the watches she does wear, she wears the uh, Casio Duro. Whenever that's like our vacation watch, whenever uh, the MDB 106, the Bill Gates watch, the, the, the Bill Gates, you know, Cassio, mm. that $50 watch, 42 millimeters. Um, and she loves like that size. And so traditional, quote unquote, like ladies watches, she's just always turned off by because the sizing is just, just gendering something by size, not just style. It, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not the most appropriate thing. Um, and, and the thing is, is that's a 35 that's all dial. It's probably not going to look quite like a thirty-five on your wrist. Right. Yeah, you know, it looks like the citizen, uh, like the citizen Nighthawk, where the slide rule is like there's no bezel and just all all dials. Right, it's, it's all like, dials, so it looks yeah. a little bit bigger than it actually is. This is actually a good portion. Uh, Dale, are you still with us? Yes. Two questions. What yes. are your thoughts on this? So, as uh, as a, as a, and I'm and I'm, I'm sorry if I already asked you this. As a as a as a nap time owner, you know what are your uh, a initial thoughts on this, and b c can you explain to us how the hell the slide rule bezel works? Because I still don't know. Uh, <laughs> or what or what it's supposed to do? Like like like. 
Like, I know what an abacus is, but I, if you put a gun to my head right now, I couldn't tell you what it did or how it worked. What is the slide row bezel supposed to do? It does multiple calculations. It really depends on the slide bezel as well. Like, I, oh, that one, okay. I'm just looking at it. It's got miles per hour, nautical miles. So it converts, like, speed and distance by the looks of it. Okay. And a few other basic ones where the Navy time you can do a lot more calculations with fuel, rates of climb, descent, distance traveled in time, fuel burnt in a period of time, that, all that sort of stuff. Not that we ever use it now anyway. I mean, it's such a, uh, it's, a it's a tool from the 50s and 60s, yeah. really. Um, I did a video ages ago. I said, you know, it's a pilot's watch that pilots used to use. Yeah. It just looks cool. Like I don't, I rarely use mine. I use the chronograph more than the slide rule anyway and i can't to explain how to use it would take far too long <laughs> do you use your chronograph more for 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 work or for making cookies because i use my chronograph for cookies it's, it's, it's my cookie timer i time my walk with the dog perfect that's a, that's 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 a real life chronograph usage um so the second question what are your thoughts when you saw this watch did you think um, it was I, interesting or i like them i just i agree with the feminine thing why is it listed as a feminine watch why not just a uh, navi 35 navi 38 navi 41 and have you selected of sizes they're paying, they're paying charlie's there and enough money so they got to give her something to promote so i'm guessing maybe that's why i mean i lost where's where where where, where, where did charlie's go they bring her back in here. i mean the prices are actually the same for the 35 the 38 and the 41 Issues. in the standard steel and blue yeah. or whatever they're exactly the same price so it doesn't matter what size you get the They're pricing, the price. the except pricing, for the, obviously the diamond ones and stuff. The diamond ones are approximately eighty eight hundred uh, USD, okay. and then this all gold, all red gold one that was like what thirty thirty thousand. I've actually tried the I've tried the thirty eight mil one in blue and grey. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah, I like them. So cool. Like they're more of a dressy watch, I reckon, more than uh, yeah a sporty watch. But that's what navvies are anyway. They're not really a uh, sports watch with 30 meters water resistant. <laughs> That's funny. Damon, uh, any knee-jerk reactions? Have you had the chance to kind of take a look at these when they were released, or are you seeing them for the, for, for the first time now? Yeah, no, no, I have. I've been looking at it a little bit. Um, I guess my, my thing is the Navi timers were never that small. I think yeah. they were like around 40. So, you know, I think this is sort of evoking the same sort of sentiment that we might think when we're looking at the Long Jeans Legend Diver which was originally 42, but they sized down a female version that was also Mother of Pearl, I think, and that was at 36. Um, and I know the Captain Cook probably got the same treatment as well. Um, they had a white Mother of Pearl version of that. So, I mean, the concept then kind of changes, right? It's no longer a tool watch, but then now it's become something of a novelty on yeah. that. And in, in, in that way, I almost kind of think of like, so, like, totally different interest, but um, almost in a weird way, kind of similar. For people that are into firearms, mm -hmm. um, there's there are firearms that are colored Tiffany blue and hot pink magenta. <laughs> really? Dude, yes. <laughs> yes. She, hey, no. listen. Every girl in Bristol has one. It's on Instagram. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that you would know about this, man. And, and it's, it's just kind of funny because it's like, well... You're, you're changing, you're morphing then the whole concept of its practicality and, and then it just kind of becomes something else. It's not a bad thing. It's just, but it is it's, a thing. It's like a purse. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it changes the concept and it doesn't mean it's any less practical because how many people would use those really for self-defense anyway. Um, but it's, it's just something that I think deserves to be said. And then also we're looking at like Panerai. They, they now are doing 38 millimeters. So I think yeah. this is all sort of following the trend. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's, it's an attempt to cash in a little his and hers concept. And that's not a bad thing. It's a thing. Um, that's a good point. I'm, I'm curious to see if we start seeing like a his and her sort of like billboards going up. Like here in the U.S., I don't know how it is, uh, or at least here in my state in Florida, it's a big mall state. So we got we got malls motherfucking everywhere. You, you see, and you see billboards all the time. Uh, I'll be I'll be I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna I'm gonna cause like a four like forty car pileup. But when I see a Breitling uh, billboard and it has like a like a his and hers Navi timer, I'm gonna take a picture and put it on the feed. Hold on, I gotta I gotta get my cat out of here. Cat, say hi to everyone. Cat. There we go. A cat. But this is pretty interesting, actually. So yeah, these are ranging in price from four thousand 
five thousand if it's got the jewels, eight thousand if it's got the jewels and some red gold, and then thirty thousand if it's all gold, uh, all jewels. Um, At least it's cheap to service. Is it? Is it cheap to service? I don't even know. I don't even know movement. It's got to add a it's twenty eight twenty four dash two, which is the B seventeen. Wow. And that's probably another size. That's probably another size thing. They'd they'd probably then have something like fully yeah, in house. Still, it's still nine point nine mil, so they're quite quite thin. What's this girl holding? What is that? The fuck is? That? Oh, it's a plane ticket. Where's she sitting? One she's gonna A. Cal- she's going to calculate how their flight takes. She's got- <laughs> <laughs> <Navi> timer. <laughs> that's crazy, man. And then complain. This said it would only take eighteen hours. All right. <laughs> That was also probably the creepiest thing I've ever done in my existence. Zooming like in to see where this model was sitting in her fucking. Is she wearing flight. a Navi timer? Uh, down. She's not wearing the one in the photo. She's wearing something. It's photoshopped. It's just photoshopped. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool, man. So here, let's do this. I want to end on this note with these um, 35 millimeter Navi timers. The other really weird thing that happens. And this is sort of within the same realm as I made the I made the comment before toxic toxic masculinity. There's a sense that as a certain gender, I'm supposed to only buy uh, a certain thing. So when a watch brand comes out with something and they say this is our ladies' line or this is our men's line, ladies feel sometimes compelled to only purchase from you know, the quote unquote ladies' line, and obviously men feel sometimes compelled to only buy from the, the men's line. I don't like that. I think that's kind of. <sighs> It, it limits people. Anything in which you're trying to do which enriches yourself, you know, watch collecting, digging into watch history, any sort of things where if you're doing that and you reach some kind of impediment which is stopping you from doing something, which is going to enrich how you're interacting with the hobby, anything that does that is immediately, you know, not fair, not right. So, you know, if anyone listening has ever encountered anything like that, whether you're a woman watch collector or a man, you know, male watch collector, um, Wear whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, just don't overpay. I think that's that's the headline for these Navitime at 35s. You know what I mean? So let's do this. I'm going to turn off my screen share and let's start rounding this thing down. Uh, let me go to my screen here. In true two broke watch snobs fashion, I have gone over time again. <laughs> so I am sorry if I kept anyone longer. Um, you know, then they were supposed to. Then they were supposed to be here. So let's do this. I'll go around the room. Let's do final thoughts. Free form, safe, safe space. Say whatever you want. It's all good. Um, and then we can do our goodbyes. And uh, yeah, we can we can get this one uh, get this one of the books. I'm gonna go for final thoughts in the same order that I did our wrist checks in. Uh, so I will start with Dale. Dale, what is your impression? Final thoughts on not just the releases, but also uh, how Brightling chose to uh, share these releases, and you know. Just that sort of overall closing thoughts. Were actually were you on the webcast when they when they were? Um, when they were I saw it later on because I was actually working. So oh, cool. It, okay. Because we're yeah, in so, weird time zone and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's probably right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a normal time zone for you. We're we're all the weird ones. I mean, that's yeah. you know, that's the reality. So no, yeah, I think final thoughts. I think they've done like the way they've been doing the webcast and their media way they're doing things. I think it's really good. They're sort of ahead of the game at the moment in that respect. Um, I'm in actually a watch group, Breitling 1884 on Facebook, and George's Kern is actually in that group, and so are some of the other Breitling. So he actually talks to us and writes messages. He's quite proactive in that respect with Breitling fanatics, which you don't see from many other CEOs. So in that respect, I like the way that he does that. Um, The new line, I like the chronomat. It's pretty cool. Um, not sure I like how they've advertised it as the premier line sports watch, but it's still really cool. Uh, the Super Heritage, yeah, leave it, take it, whatever. And the Navi 35, we've already discussed. I don't, it, just have it as a 35, mil 38 and 41. It doesn't need to be gender specific. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm going next to Henry, my man. Final, final thoughts. Have you left enriched or, uh, to use my favorite quote that Michael had shared on an episode one podcast recently, uh, do you have hate in your heart? I, uh, hate is hate is such a <laughs> some <nasty>. dumb word. <laughs> when he said that, he said, "Kaz, I wake up every morning with hate in my heart." And it's like, oh my god, I was having a good day, but now, oh, Jesus, so sad, so sad, <laughs> so sad. 
So, but here, so. I'm sorry, Henry, final thoughts. So, I mean, I think this is why I, I do two things. I think one is I gravitate towards vintage, and two, like, there's a lot of watches that I that I really like that I will never own the actual original version of, like, you know, some original Navitimers, original Super Ocean, original Rolex GMT. And so I feel like rather than try to get into a reinterpretation of the brand's doing, which is for me is always disappointing. It's always just off the mark. It's always not as good. It's always, you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm driven by aesthetics and design mostly. Um, I'll find another brand that does something similar, you know, not exactly the same or a brand that is rethinking what that kind of watch is. You know, I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards Seiko and the SKXs and all that kind of stuff, because you yeah. can kind of make that watch anything you want. It scratches an itch that like maybe a reissue of like a sub won't or something, you know, so I feel like it's fine. I'm not the audience for this. I think that, you know, Breitling has made some watches that I think have made, you know, significant design contributions to watchmaking. I, you see the echoes of that in other brands. And I would probably be chasing things that are influenced by that rather than a reissue for, you know, especially for the money. I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, not, you know, no hate, you know, as my wife would say, I'm not, don't want to yuck other people's yums, but, uh, <laughs> That's but a much nicer way of saying. I say on air, um, uh, "piss on your strawberries." I'm going to say what you said because yeah. what I say is horrible. What, what is a yuck on other people's uh, yums? You don't, you don't want to yuck other people's yums. You know, That's you so nice. somebody's like, "Ooh, what are you yeah. eating?" Hey, okay, don't yuck my yums. You know, <laughs> oh, piss on my strawberries. <laughs> um, so I, actually, I will, I will, Henry. I'll ask you this question, and then I'll ask everyone else around the room. You're in a mall. You're getting general sows or general salads, however you say it. You're walking by a Breitling boutique. Are you going to go in and try any of these watches on? I mean, if I saw that rainbow one in the window, I'd think I was walking by a fucking Hollister, first of all, or the search <laughs> store. Uh, okay. But no, I would go into the Breitling boutique and I would try on the classic, classic Navitimer. I would walk in, you know, thing that go represents with the classics, the, the classic thing that represents the classic aesthetic of the brand. That's what I'm interested in. I'm a traditionalist. So, so cool. Okay, here, let's do this. Uh, next up is Damon. Damon, do final thoughts. Um, you know, on the way they released it, on the actual release of themselves, and scenario, you're in a mall, you're getting your egg roll on, you're walking by the uh, by the Breitling or whatever. Are you going to go in and try out any of these newer models? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I'll I'll, I'll try on every stupid watch they got. Like I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I honestly, I, I really hope that this series is well received. Um, that this collection yeah. is because if it is, that means it will give. Breitling and every other brand out there, um, the courage to continue trying something that's a little bit different. If that yeah, means fair. coming back, you know, or, or you know, as, as much as I don't care for the idea of like this whole flashing concept of like a rainbow dial, I mean, if they do that, then maybe there's going to be something cool that's going to come out of that. So um, I, I'm optimistic about it. And, uh, and yeah, those are my thoughts. So cool. Super, super cool. Uh, Baird, close us out with final thoughts, man. Final thoughts. On the release, the models, and let's say you're in a mall, you're getting your orange chicken on. I, if you guys can't tell, I'm fucking starving right now, okay? Uh, and you walk by a Breitling or whatever, and you see they got the new one of these three things in. Are you going in trying any of them on? Did you pick chicken because I'm from Tennessee? Uh, <laughs> is that is chicken a? I like chicken, but I'm not no, from I, Tennessee. Dude, you hear my accent? Fried chicken is on the dinner is on the dinner list <laughs> every day. But um, I'm so no, jealous. I, <laughs> but uh um i the one thing i thought was actually kind of neat i'm not as i'm not well versed in brightling unfortunately um they were always a little piloty and, and larger than i kind of like but with that said i do really like the fact that they pulled a design from the 1980s with the chronomat i kind of think that's cool because that's my lifetime um, rather than something from the 60s. I love 60s and 70s watches, but, you know, the 80s had a design flair that you don't see anymore, and they were kind of, you know, they, they were a little bit different, um, and they, you know, they probably aren't super popular by today, but I like that design a lot, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, I don't know that I would walk in and try one out because I look like a slob. <laughs> You know, hey man, you're that's that's the new that's the new just make them think you're like a tech billionaire. Yeah, like shorts and like a white t shirt. Though. I don't <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna let you handle a ten thousand dollar watch when you walk in and go, Hey, that thing right there looks pretty damn good. <laughs> See what, they, you got on that. what is this, uh eighty five bucks? You know Dude, if you're ever down here, I'm gonna take you to Bell Harbor in Miami. You will see millionaires in like Publix bags, like they don't give a fuck what they're they eating like drippy cheeseburgers on their hulks and shit. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's, you know, it's the, it's the new money, man. You'll, I think you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So basically, 
<laughs> What'd you say? What's that fancy uh, mall area in Miami? Uh, Bal 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 Harbor. Uh, so Bal Harbor is a really like a, a specific mall. Oh, and there's the Seabold building. Uh, the Seabold building looks like it was bombed out during during Judge Dredd, but they have a bunch of like little individual stores that like have very very nice watches in there. Yeah, because I was in Miami a few years ago, but we went to this fancy mall and the Amiga okay. boutique. They let us in, but they didn't talk to us. Myself and my wife. <sighs> but then we went down to a few other ones, and they're all chatty. And one guy got me a coffee and everything. So it's you weird. Got, you got it? the you got the free coffee. Just, just depends where you go. <laughs> Mr. Fans, where you go, man? That's funny. So I don't know why, Baird, when you were talking about the Chronomat in the 80s, I'm just like, I should buy a Chronomat and like a Lamborghini Countach. And oh, just... my God. <laughs> yeah. I have a white jacket. I have a white jacket. I'll be crocking. And you can and be just, I don't know why. The first thing I thought of, I'm just like, why? That's okay. Cool, man. I'm, I'm all for it. But here, let's do this, guys. Super, super fun. Again, sorry for going over time. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to close this out. We'll all say goodbye, and then we'll all wave and say goodbye. But no one hang up. We'll Let's talk for two minutes after I hit the stop recording button just to kind of circle up and, and, uh, and you know, share thoughts and everything like that. So here, let's do this. Thank you for everyone at home. Uh, for sticking with us this long, go and check out like a lot of the links in the description. Go and check out the Brightlink site if you want to see like technical stats and things like that. Stuff you can just read on the site. Go and read that on the site. Really hope though you enjoyed the discussion around these Brightlink releases. Um, really excited just for you know the future of how brands also choose to share releases. Just talking about how the space is changing in general. Um, obviously, Watches and Wonders is going fully digital. Uh, Boss is trying to get their shit together still. Cartier, even though they're at Watches of Wonders, Cartier's doing their own digital platform, the watch making experience, or whatever the fuck it's called. It's on the website. It's on our website, tubewatchsnaps.com. You go check it out. So um, just in regards to that, I think Brightlink's also for the past couple of years been trying to just do it differently. So I don't think this felt like too much of a paradigm shift for them in regards to the trade shows. So here I will do this. I will say goodbye. I'll let everyone at home go and then guys let's stick around. So thank you so much for listening to Broke Watch Times Writers Room episode number four. I had to write it down because I can't count. Uh talk about the Brightling releases. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and then uh go to the go to the website tubewatchnobs.com, listen to the podcast, go and check us out. We're all over the place right now and uh yeah say bye to everyone at home everyone. Bye. bye.